Hey, everybody. Um, Pastor Scott Staub and coming to you from New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church in Gilbertsville. Hi, and I'm Pastor Mary Ann Sifke here at St. Luke in Gilbertsville. That's amazing. Two Lutheran churches in Gilbertsville. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Especially when we work together. We do yeah. even better stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, a very special passage again today. It's, it's kind of ironic that we keep on um, continuing in this uh, discussions with Jesus and and uh, telling people in the parables. But we find that a lot in Matthew, don't we? <laughs> so um, if you have your Bibles, uh, open them up and uh, let's get started and turn to Matthew 21 and we'll be reading 23 to 32. Uh, let us begin. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, Oh, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Hmm. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I, you know, I, over between yesterday when we were studying in, in a Bible study group together um, and last night and today, um, I thought about a couple of weeks ago, you brought up a very interesting um, concept and also practice. And uh, when we look at these gospel lessons that we should always take them in context. And I, and I think giving the context to this story really shapes um, the reader uh, be able to shape the characters in these stories and why they are acting the way they are. Yes. Yeah, I, so this is after Palm Sunday. This yeah. is after Jesus parade into Jerusalem. Right. With people saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Um, waving their palm branches and Jesus on a donkey. Um, <laughs> you know, so all of these crowds are giving this high authority to Jesus yeah. who is essentially mocking the authority of the religious in Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah. And then when he finally gets to the temple in Jerusalem, what does he do there? <laughs> That's when he cleanses the temple and he throws all these vendors out yeah. that are making money. Right. Right. So Jesus has already done some things to uh, disturb the religious elite of the temple and of the city. Yeah, and he's owning their home. <laughs> it's like yeah. they're, they're shop. He's taking up shop, and it's like kind of like uh, you know those halftime football kind of uh, uh, famous like movie points where no one comes in our house and, <laughs> and right. you can imagine that they're in a huddle, you know, all the religious leaders <laughs> <are> <laughs> halftime, you know, it's the second day and they're like, 
We got to get rid of them. This is our house. Right. <laughs> Nobody's going to come in our house and push us around. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I think we're all, we're all territorial and yeah. we all want to have the power in our own place. <laughs> Which brings us to a funny point. I can't not bring this up. Okay. So yesterday, as Pastor Scott knows, it was a very interesting day for me. I don't know what was going on in my brain, but I just kept cracking myself up all day long. So we're studying this scripture in Bible study, and I kept thinking about the word authority. This scripture is about authority and power. And I was thinking... What can I use to describe to the congregation authority? And then something popped in my memory about a TV commercial that says, we submit to a higher authority. And I could not remember where that came from. So I Googled it. Brace yourself. It was Hebrew national hot dogs. <laughs> Going so, up for 2,000 years. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it, so in a way, it's a perfect image. And in another way, it's a terrible image because we have to remind ourselves when we read these stories and we read these parables of Jesus to not lump all of the Jewish folks together. Yeah. You know, we, we have to remember Jesus' Jewishness and the folks that were following him, Jews and Gentiles. So we can't, you know, we, we don't want to be anti-Semitic in our preaching or in our teaching of the gospel. And we tend to label things that uh, yeah. not, I shouldn't call it human nature. Not all of us do it, but we tend to label things like um, those Lutherans at St. Luke or those Lutherans at, Gil at New Ann, or, right. you know, or those United Methodists up at United, at, you know. Yeah. And they, we tend to label, and then we think it's just like this finite. Everybody's molded; they're they're cloned, you know. And they, right. and uh, just like this story, it's uh, not all the religious leaders were were angry at Jesus. Uh, we see uh, aspects of that in the teachings where they come to him and talk to him, and um, you know, and and agree with him in so, in some manners, and uh, and also you know, not everybody that was following Jesus probably was, um, as the religious leaders were, that wanted a radical change. You know, some some just loved his teaching, and, and that's where we find them today, you know, sitting there teaching. And and uh, it, it's just amazing how we do label. And the, the followers of John, you know, it, 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 this thing is, is, is riddled, you know, with uh, this passage of labeling and stigmas. And uh, stigmas are, are, are really... Um, hurtful thing if we if we allow ourselves to start stigmatizing um, aspects of religion or people. And and Jesus is trying to trap these religious authorities in their abuse of power yeah. and in their abuse of authority. And they know it and they see it. Um I mean it sounds like from this passage that they knew that John was the re real deal. Yeah. They knew that John was a prophet sent by God, but John challenged their authority. So they ignored him. Um, and now here's Jesus challenging their authority and they recognize it. They see it. They know that Jesus is a prophet. I mean, but they don't want to answer it because it challenges their power. Right, and it's kind of ironic in, in the twist in the story that, that God sends both uh, John and Jesus, and uh, and yet they uh, those who are pretending to uphold the authority of God are uh, actually abusing and yeah. and questioning those sent by God. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it 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 it's a uh, it's amazing that when we think and and it's also struck me. Um, um, hard hard in the last day or so is that um, we're closing up worship down at the picnic road this this coming Sunday and and uh, but you know and thinking about that it's we, we've had a wonderful time I mean 
God has blessed us with perfect weather every Sunday. <laughs> I mean, it. I mean, last Sunday was a little chilly, <laughs> but you know, and but this Sunday is supposed to be in the eighties, <laughs> and again, we're going to have a beautiful morning, and and um, it just, uh, it, it was just nice and and being out there and we acclimated to it i mean we had the instruments out we had microphones we had sound systems uh mm -hmm. we had people ushering and and people buying in the drive-in we had the fm system i mean it was it, it just all came together and it's just so amazing to think that we did that for a whole summer and we weren't in god's house and so i started thinking about that you know, the irony of keep on calling the sanctuary God's house. But what about the other part of creation that was God's house for three months, you know, and, and uh, all the things were stripped away. We had no altar. Uh, we had no pyramids. We had no um, signs. We had the only candle that we put there because mostly because it's breezy. <laughs> yeah. But for the baptism this past week, you know, so all the symbolism was gone. All the things that tell you authority. There was no cross, you know. I mean, you know, we were wearing a cross, but I mean, we didn't have a, a cross set up or anything. So all those things per se, authority that we definitely need when we go in God's house was all stripped. But yet worship was worship and praise was praise. And it all happened without all the symbols of man-made power, you know. Right. And one of the commentaries that I was reading about this scripture reminded me of the word metanoia, which is a change of heart. When we talk about that, um, we often talk about repentance. So John was preaching, you know, repentance. Um, yeah. yeah. But this parable is the perfect story about changing your mind and about the grace of God. So the one that says, I will not go, mm -hmm. but then does go. Church, it's okay to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's perfect here. We, we hold on to our power sometimes just because we're stubborn. Like these religious leaders, they could have just changed, changed their mind. You know, Jesus would have shown them grace. Right. I have confidence that God would have shown them grace. And, and that's what we see at the end of this scripture is um, Jesus saying, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. It's not that they're not going. It's right. that they're now going last. Yeah. So I, I think there's something here about changing your mind and in the land of stubborn old Germans, <laughs> I'm related to several. <laughs> I is one. Oh, that's right. Pastor Scott is yeah, one. You called me um, old. I'm writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> On tape. <laughs> On September 23rd, 2020, Pastor Marianne called Pastor Scott old. <laughs> but, um, you know, so that's also a sweeping generalization. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, um, so second career. Um, so the first career was in sales. And, and um, before that, it, it was in research and development. And one of the things you learn in research development, if you're not making mistakes or, or something doesn't work out, you're not trying. <laughs> you're not pushing the envelope. Uh, you're never going to get a patent if you're not trying something new. And somehow, I think we, we lose those lessons in life with, uh, um, with religion and our practices that we do as Christians. And Jesus was all about change. I mean, the temple he was teaching in was great, and he had his audience there, but then what does he remark, you know, in the Bible, uh, you know, this temple will be destroyed, you know, <laughs> taking it down, you know, and, and uh, so no stone will be left unturned. And, and, uh, and yet, you know, that, that didn't phase him that uh, this temple would be taken down, be created by man. And uh, God gave the inspiration, but um, 
uh, we and just as evidence in the picnic grove and in the parking lot now that we're going to do and, and uh, it's uh, you, you need to change and you need to adapt and and still do those things that are important well and i when we remember that the authority of god lies in our hearts um in our minds and our souls yeah and is a power that is not like an earthly power it isn't a power over people it isn't a power that is used for abuse um it's a power that is used specifically for bringing the reign of god to earth right. and bringing the kingdom of god to earth and that makes such a big difference in what we do as the church and and uh i <laughs> you talk about the moment in God's creation and being filled in and doing that. Um, twice it's happened where we're in a picnic grove and one time out in our parking lot where there's a field behind deer ran by and um, I could just tell everybody's head just went. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes to show. <laughs> yeah. There have been a couple of times out here in our pavilion that birds have um, sung in response, <laughs> which yeah. is really yeah. good. We think we're in control. <laughs> and just that, that minute, yeah, it's like squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying the Apostles' Creed, and also the deer runs by squirrel, you know, just like. <laughs> but I, I'm really challenged by this gospel. I continue to be challenged by this gospel because I still think there's so much more here that I haven't really dug into yet or, or pondered yet. Yeah, well, he, this is one where you take one line and uh, um, you basically, of the 10 verses, you basically have 10 different sermons, you know, and, yeah. and uh, you know, you can just read into everything and um, it's packed, packed full. Maybe that's part of, maybe God divides that way because we know that every three years we have the lectionary, we'll come back to yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so it gives us something else and i don't know if i'll be preaching in 30 years i i, I doubt it but anyway <laughs> you will be because <laughs> you're young and i'm old <laughs> september 23rd <laughs> scott called me young okay um <laughs> yeah yeah and, and i think too is like when you said i'm packing it and um I, I, I like that I like that line in there about um, when they start talking about John, you know, and and, uh, and they're afraid of the crowd. Right now, during this political season, you know, we're we're running up to the election, and it's amazing, like the commentaries about you know the Supreme Court judge and, and what senators want to do, and maybe some will break away because they're afraid of not being reelected. You know, and we see it all the time and and here you have the religious leaders doing the same thing like let's not upset the crowd <laughs> we want their vote <laughs> that yeah. is, it is the exact it's it's the same scenario yeah it is the same scenario um and i i one of the words that I strive to live by is integrity. And, uh, you know, if you do something wrong, say you're sorry and there will be grace. And that's just not, I, I just wanted the chief priests and the elders to say, Jesus, we're sorry. Yeah. But we also know where this story is leading if we put it in context yeah. this is leading to the crucifixion of jesus yeah these were not people that were going to say jesus i'm sorry and receive that grace then and there and i i also looked into it about hate begets hate and, and violence mm -hmm. um and um a commentary by richard Rohr, uh friar richard Rohr, this past uh, we talked about Jesus um, being the ultimate transformer, electrical transformer. What does that mean? Is that, um, you know, huge voltage comes into a transformer and instead of just passing it through and, and burning our houses down or whatever, or whatever it's connected to, it takes that charge 
and reduces it to what we need in a home. And Jesus does that with hate and violence and, and seems to be the perfect transformer for everything in the world that took all that sin. And, and yet, you know, as religious leaders, it's, it's such a great model tonight. We're meeting in a small group and discussing this. Um, and, uh, it's a way to be, but it is so hard. And we see it being that, um, in the religious leaders and they're not able to transform all this new energy that's surging and uh, they just don't know what to do with it and instead let it flow through and create violence and um, I think we have to be cognizant of that as well in our own lives yeah. and I think your perfect your statement was perfect for that I made a mistake I'm sorry mm -hmm. you know that that you know, that shuts down all that energy, negative energy. And those are hard words to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pastor Scott, I think it might be lunchtime. Um, I heard you were grilling some Hebrew national hot dogs. Is that what I heard? You heard correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm answering to a higher authority, my stomach. So anyway. <laughs> Yes, yes. What do you like on your hot dogs, Pastor Scott? <laughs> I like mustard and, and uh, raw onions. How about okay. yourself? Sauerkraut and bacon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The good chili dogs, good too. Yakos. Uh, local Yako hot dogs are very good in our I've area. Heard of them. Yes, I call them death rockets because they. <laughs> They come okay. back after you, but they're, they're onions and chili on them. Oh. Okay. And so like I'm, I'm from the land of Tony Paco's. So Toledo, <sighs> Ohio, have a Tony Paco's hot dog for me. Yeah. And five-star chili, you know? <laughs> oh. Well, what? thank you, friends, for pondering the gospel with us. It's good to be back with you. Yep. It was a pleasure returning with you once again this week. And uh, I think we threw a whole lot of stuff at you. So um, just unpack it what you need to unpack each of our, and remember each of our contexts is different, just like the context of this story. So place it into your own context and uh, look through your own lenses um, at these stories and it'll speak loudly to you. So yeah. until we see you again next week, peace and go get them. Peace to you friends. Bye. Bye.